OK, uh, let's get into a topic which is causing some debate in football. It is to do with how the Champions League is set to change in 2024-25. We know that the competition should expand to 36 teams, but it could also include two extra places for teams based on their historical performances in Europe if they don't qualify for the Champions League in the normal ways. Who better to explain us uh, all of this is our reporter, sen uh, senior reporter Rob Dorsett, who's here on set with us. OK, so it's caused some debate. It's a bit controversial, but, but why? Well, look, I think we try and put this in layman's terms because it's an incredibly complex yeah. subject. But the bottom line is that for the first time in history, UEFA is proposing that qualification for the Champions League, the lucrative Champions League, the elite club competition in Europe, will be not based on how you've done in the previous season domestically, but based on how you've done historically. And the two teams that get a wild card will be selected on the basis of success in the Champions League. Um, and factually, that creates a two-tier system. Mm. One for the biggest clubs in Europe that have done well in Europe and been there for, for many, many years, and another system for the rest. And that has worrying echoes for a lot of senior people in the Premier League, in Premier League clubs, and in football generally that I've been speaking to, worrying echoes of the European Super League. Mm. Because the fundamental principle of that was a closed shop for the biggest clubs to make sure that they guaranteed their revenue streams every year. And everybody was concerned that it wasn't based on sporting merit anymore. Um, and the executives I've been speaking to have told me that the very same principles of fair play that were under threat by the European Super League are under threat again now, but in a slightly more covert fashion. Um, the motivation for UEFA and the big clubs is very clear, a safety net, if you like. If you don't qualify via your domestic league, as long as you've done well in Europe in the past, we'll still get you in. That's the, the fundamental principle here. But the people I've been speaking to are worried that, that with those wild cards, two could become four, could become eight, and the Champions League becomes more and more of a close shot. Really powerful quotes from people who don't want to be named on this subject because it is so sensitive mm. that we can show you now. Um, it, it's, it's powerful stuff. Look at, look at this one. It's almost like this is European Super League light and the fear is that two might become four, might become eight, with the Champions League becoming more and more of a closed shop. That's what one person said to me, one executive at a Premier League club. Here's another one. The European Super League was a sideshow. It couldn't practically happen. But a Super League within UEFA via the Champions League very much could happen. And the fear that these people are having that they're telling me is that UEFA is granting some exclusivity, if you like, to the elite clubs, which guarantees them revenue streams by being in the Champions League, which simply aren't on offer uh, to other clubs. Um, and as one executive put it to me, UEFA is beginning to act more like a governing body and less like a, a competition organiser. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, I need to stress here, David, we have approached UEFA for comment. We asked them to come on our programme and, and do us an interview. They declined and they said these are simply plans at the moment and proposals, nothing's been set in stone. Yeah, OK. Um, but as you say, there are echoes here of what might have been the case had the European Super League came to light. We knew the reaction there was across football and, and the fans taking to the streets and protesting. So this could be, I suppose, um, just inching towards that reality in a different form, almost by stealth, really. Um, this That's is very... what the critics say. Yeah, That's yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. This is, you know, what, what you've been telling us here and those quotes you just illustrated. Um, it is a complex story. Let's sort of try and break it down into, into some key points. So I'll sort of, I'll, I'll introduce these, Rob, and then maybe on a, okay. a key moment you can give us some context. So, yes, UEFA planning, as you say, plans, proposals rather than absolutely set in stone, to offer Champions League wild cards from 2024 so that's when the Champions League is likely to be reformed uh, into this um, uh, four extra team competition. Expect to be ratified at UEFA Exco meeting in uh, Vienna on May the 10th. So two spaces in the Champions League reserved for clubs who didn't qualify for it in the normal ways through league placing or winning the competition and that these will be determined by best historical performances in Europe. So again, it's, it's to do with if you've already been a big club in Europe, then you're more likely to gain access back into that competition at, at Europe's top table. Exactly. And the discussions are ongoing within UEFA. Um, we expect them to vote on this when they have their next Exco meeting and Congress on May the 10th, so next month. Uh, Alexander Sheferin, the, uh, the, the, the president of UEFA, has said that. He expects there to be a vote on this next month. But they do have an Exco meeting next week. 
right. on Tuesday, where a lot of the detail of this we expect to be thrashed out. And I've been told by a number of people that this is going to go through. The UA for Exco meeting don't ever deny something that's been put before them when it's been put forward to them by Sheffrin and, and, the, and, the, and the rest of UEFA. So it's the detail that happens between now and then that is absolutely key. Let's move this one, shall we, to the next, yes. the next key points. OK, so let's read uh, the, uh, the next five points. Here they are. Majority of Premier League clubs feel that helping biggest clubs qualify is against the spirit of the game. That's a strong comment. And, and just maybe unpack this second one for us, Rob. Leapfrogging, likely to be banned after pressure from the Premier League. What exactly do you mean by leapfrogging? This is a key principle, and this is what frightened and worried the Premier League clubs that aren't inside the big six, if you like, the most. And the fear was that imagine a situation like the Premier League you've got at the moment where West Ham are sixth and Manchester United are seventh. Imagine they both jump up a place in the games to come. And by the end of the season, West Ham finished fifth and Manchester United finished sixth. The fear was that Manchester United would leapfrog West Ham and be bumped into the Champions League, whereas West Ham, poor old little West Ham, <laughs> would stay with the Europa League. Right. They simply felt that that was not acceptable in any format. And so the Premier League has been told by its member clubs, the, cl the associations, that they want them to lobby UEFA on that regard. It looks like that isn't going to happen now. Well, OK, so uh, let's, let's take... A, would that be something, by the way, if you think about this just from the Premier League perspective, that's the, the example you've given us that could happen, but... If, if, it, if the Premier League managed to make that stick, as in you, you're not going to allow that scenario to play out, would that then have to be uh, managed across the other major leagues in Europe as oh, well? Absolutely. Because, I mean, UEFA presumably have to apply this consistently, don't this they? This is the problem. And the Premier League are lobbying on their own behalf, yeah. on the behalf of the clubs that are talking to them. But, of course, Italy, Spain and, and, and France and Germany are, are, are almost as powerful in many regards, and they're yeah. lobbying for their, for their own instances. So what UEFA does here, I think, could be really, really interesting. But the next point there, David, the big six in England could all qualify if they finish in the top six places. Again, let me give you a hypothetical hypothetical situation here. If Manchester United, as things stand, win their game in hand, they'll go into sixth. And that means all of the top six places in the Premier League are accommodated by the big six, the traditional big six. So the, the, the executives at other Premier League clubs that I've been speaking to say to me they already have a position of power. They already have that elite status. They already get big, bigger revenue streams than the rest. And they fear that the rest of the teams can't get into that. It's a death of aspiration as far as they're concerned. They can't yeah. break that exclusivity down if things like these wild cards come in, which mean even if the big clubs have a bad season, they've still got a safety net. They've still yeah. got another way of getting into the Champions League and, and not missing And ultimately, the, the criticism being that that kind of compounds that situation. It makes it harder and harder as the years go by because they keep getting in. Therefore, their, you know, their, their historical quotient, if you like, improves yet again and therefore it improves their chances in, in further years. I, I can see that perspective, certainly. OK, let's go to these, these last couple of points, particularly this, this penultimate one. Premier League owners' charter dropped off the agenda. I mean, this was on the agenda, certainly in the wake of the Super League story, wasn't it? Very much so. And this is something that's happened quietly in the background. My understanding is that after the European Super League, there was such anger in the, in the English game and, and in the game across Europe as well that a lot of countries started saying, we want to legislate to make sure this can't happen again. And the Premier League promised that it would introduce something called the Owner's Charter, whereby any club that tried to break away and form a breakaway league in the future would be heavily sanctioned, mm -hmm. amongst other ways of, of protecting the, 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 the integrity of the competition. That owner's charter hasn't happened, and we are almost at the 12-month anniversary. One year ago tomorrow is the anniversary of the European Super League wow. collapsing. Mm. Hasn't happened in 12 months. It was on the agenda for the Premier League clubs at the beginning, when the European Super League first collapsed. Hasn't been since, and I understand, talking to execs at clubs, it's not going to be on the agenda anytime soon. It's been, as one of those execs said to me, kicked into the long grass, because it's just too sensitive a subject to deal with. So... Where does that leave us? The, the big clubs that, that wanted to break away haven't been guaranteed that they can't do with legislation. And a lot of people have said to me it makes the Tracy Crouch review, the fan-led review, much oh, more in, important that yeah. they can then have an independent regulator of football to make sure that can't happen. OK, final point here. Extra Champions League place via the FA Cup. Hugely unpopular outside the big six and fraught with controversy. Well, why would it be hugely unpopular outside the, the
the... On the face of it, that doesn't make sense, does it? No, yeah. Well, I'll tell you why, because... this And this is a really key point. It's been explained to me that uh, if, if there is an extra Champions League place based on UEFA's coefficient, the historical performances, for the winners of the FA Cup, that means you could have... At two teams lining up at Wembley for the biggest showpiece in English football with different prizes at stake, yeah. depending on who won it. So right. let me give you an example. We've got Manchester City, Liverpool, Chelsea and Crystal Palace yep. in the semi-finals of the FA Cup this season. Three of those, City, Liverpool and Chelsea, have got great coefficients. If they missed out on Champions League qualification but won the FA Cup, they'd certainly get a wild card to be in the Champions League. Yeah. Crystal Palace wouldn't. No. And so they'd be lining up at Wembley, with Crystal Palace not having a chance to get into the Premier League, but the other three potentially having a chance to get into the Premier League. Again, that goes against the level playing field principle, which a lot of people feel is very, very important in English football. OK. Um, uh, key question. Um, you know, we're talking about um, how UEFA is going to decide how these wild cards are potentially dished out. Um, where is that, that league table that ranks all the teams in, in Europe so we can just actually get a real perspective of who, who is where who is in that rank? Right, well, look, the, UEFA are still working on that. They haven't told us the exact detail and we don't know what calculation they're going to use to, to work that out. But we can show you what the UEFA coefficients are right now and okay. how they've been for the last 10 years. Yes, so these, are, these, are, these are mysterious UEFA club codes. We haven't put all the numbers in this bit, but this is the ranking. This so is the, the rankings the of where they are. And as you can yeah. see, the, the usual suspects you'd, uh, are there that you'd expect to be. From an English perspective, look, you've got, you've got Chelsea, you've got Manchester City and Manchester United in yep. the top ten. But yep. let's scroll it on to the next page. Those are the top ten in the UEFA co coefficients. The next page, I think, is really, really interesting because what you've got here oh, are the other it. teams. And we've picked out some individually. But West Ham are having a fantastic season, aren't they? Well, look, they're 90th in the UEFA coefficients. So that means that if West Ham did finish fifth, they'd have no chance at all of being giving a wild card after this is introduced in 2024. Should we, should we just go through a couple, a couple of more here? So, obviously, Leicester have been in European competition, especially after they won the Premier League, then they had that yep. Champions League uh, campaign off the back of that. Wolves have been in Europa League. Even Burnley have been in Europa League. I think at least the qualifiers, maybe even a bit further than that. So that's why they are higher than West Ham because of that recency of being involved in European competition. But still, but still, compared to the likes of Arsenal, Liverpool and Tottenham, they're a good... 60, 70 places below them in any And case. all of those 60 or 70 clubs would be ahead of West Ham in the queue for any wild, any wild card that's, that's put out. And last to the bottom there, Newcastle, 94. We know about Newcastle's spending power. We know about their ambition. Yeah. They will want to get into the Champions League and they will not get there via the wild card system. It's that simple. They are 94th in the UEFA's coefficients right now. OK, so a lot of uh, football fans have been watching... You speak about this over the last 10 minutes or so, Rob, and wondering, OK, we, we had our guarantees that the European Super League wouldn't happen. We've got rid of this idea. That one has, has gone. We, we protested on, 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 you know, outside Stamford Bridge and Anford, etc. Where are those guarantees now? Good question. And I think those are questions that will be put to UEFA and to the Premier League over the next month. And this is going to be a bigger... A bigger issue, I think, over the coming weeks. I've been told by a number of top execs at Premier League clubs that this was first mooted 12 months ago and it was UEFA's attempt to stop the elite clubs of Europe breaking away and saying, look, don't join a Super League. We can make it easier for you to be in the Champions League every year and, and we can all earn the money together. Now, that's, look, UEFA aren't here to answer that accusation, in fairness. We've asked them to. They don't want to be on, on the programme. Um, but that is why UEFA are expanding the tournament to 36 teams, so that it's harder for the, the big clubs to miss out. And it's a mutually important relationship. UEFA makes its money commercially from the biggest clubs being in the Champions League, the teams that everybody wants to see on the TV, if you like, in these mm. games. And the big clubs, it suits them down to the ground that they have regular revenue streams. They don't like this pesky qualification for the the Champions League, whereby if they have a bad season, they might miss out on money they thought they were going to get 12 months ago. How do you plan? How do you build players' contracts and transfers into that situation? So a hugely complex situation. We've got much more analysis on SkySports.com of this. I've written a big piece on there that, that hopefully tries to cover it all. But expect to hear an awful lot more about this issue on Sky Sports News and across the rest of the media over the coming month before you wait for make that decision on May the 10th. And by the way, um, I mean, obviously we've gone through it here with, with, with Rob on air, but Actually, Rob, you're going to be doing a, a special Q&A on our website as well at half past one. So not too long to go if you want to get involved with that as well. SkySports.com. Rob is all over this story and will answer any question that you have. But Rob, thank you very much for taking us through. It's some real detail to unpack. Thank you very much indeed.